All right, guys. Got a little project to do here. Part of the oval window deal was I'm going to put this fender on for him. So, I figure you guys want to check this out and do some accident repair here. And uh, let's get you guys back a little further. Accident repair here. Going to do a little uh, fixing this inner panel. Fix that. Actually, going to throw the battery tray, make a smooth battery tray for it. And fix the floor pan over here in this corner. So, stick around. We'll check it out. I'll show you guys the process, what we're doing. Let's get a look over here for a second. Let's try this one. There you go. All right. Bring you guys back in a little bit. All right. So, as with most Gia body work, you always have issues. So, we've got two fenders. Okay, to make one. So if you look at where this one's cut, see it's kind of cut in the wrong place. If you look here, and it doesn't lap over that area very well. It could be done. I have to piece in some metal. And then we've got this problem. So it's rusty there. And it's rusty up here. And then you've got this nice looking fender here. And this one is a lot better, but this is also a bullet car. So if you notice, it had the round bullets there. So this is a late model fender because you can find those a lot cheaper. So, or what we're going to have to do is section this one. And let's look here with this condition. And we've got that right there. So we've got this thing here is pushed in. That's wrinkled. And uh, this part was grafted once, wasn't it? Look at that. <laughs> this isn't the first go around on this car. They're usually like this. Your gears usually get the bad stuff. Usually they get the worst of it. I mean, everybody, they were cheap cars. Same thing as Volkswagen Bug. I mean, a little more money than a Bug, I think. But they uh, got treated pretty badly. And people ran into stuff. I don't know why. That headlight kind of stuck out. They couldn't see it. I don't have problems seeing them, but you just don't know. So, we've got some pieces here we're going to have to work with. We've got a good inner panel. You see there. And I want to, thinking stuff like this through, you don't want to have to try and cut and weld all the way along there. You're never going to get it on there straight. So that's the issue. Let's take a look here. What we've got here got to line up this hood is what we got to use. Looks like if this is lined up, that this part, this line right here is correct. So this groove right here is probably going to be okay. So the best way to do these uh, is use whatever you got to line it up. So on this one, it looks like if we've got this part straight, let's look at it. Yeah, it looks like it's pretty straight. We've got this edge straight. It's much easier to grind right here. So if I had a butt weld right along here, it'd be a lot easier to grind that or if I lapped it, you know. Either way, I could lap and tap it. So lap it and then pound it down low a little filler you could do it that way might have to do that to be able to get it to line up um, so that's the challenge so if i cut this and i leave like a lip along here leave a nice edge like that i cut right along where they did it last time 
last time, right? Uh, let's see if we cut that with a plasma cutter right there. And a straight edge, kind of make it as straight and nice as I can. Then use that as a, either a weld edge or a lap edge. And I don't want it too much of a lap edge right next to the hood line. So, got to really think all this stuff through. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually bring you guys back in. I'm going to just show you what kind of stuff I'm up against. This might be more than one video on this. Um, show you what I'm up against first, and then we'll see what the next process is. Talk to you a bit later in the video. So what we're going to do is start with where not to cut it. I don't want to cut it past this line. So when I pull this off, that's where I don't want to cut it. I want to cut it back, say right here for now, give myself something to work with. So I can tune that up and figure out whether or lap it or butt it right in there. What exactly to do like that for the back part of the fender because the two things I need to line up is I need the back edge, I need the the edge back here to line up with the door. So I'm probably gonna have to straighten this door a little bit. See this is beat in a little bit. Typical carbon gear. Yeah. Get a dead blow and fix that up. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is going to go ahead and cut down around here and down to the bumper so I can use that as a reference. i use the bumper hole as a reference. If it hasn't been cut before, maybe I'll get it right. Then we'll get lucky. All right, so now I've gotten the hood to line up pretty good. Had to do a bit of tweaking to it. Put a piece of wood underneath it, bent the hinges, all kinds of stuff. So that's lining up pretty good now. So the next thing I need to do is take this fender here. You know, we got two fenders. We're going to make one out of two. So take this fender and cut away the stuff that I'm not going to use. So if you look here, this is in pretty good shape here. All this is. There's no reason to try and graft it in right there. So we're going to cut that stuff away of the, this fender. So all this needs to come off right here. All right, all the inner panel for that. Um, and I'm going to leave the outer skin for now and just decide after I get it all cut off. 
stuff I don't need for sure. I don't need this thing. You know, this part right here, that can be cut away. I don't want to have to graft into that because this piece is good. So, so eliminate some of the junk. I'll get that stuff off the fender. We'll clean it up. It's going to go ahead and knock all that stuff off of the plasma cutter. And then I'll bring you guys back in in a little bit. All right, so that's what we got here. Got that all cut away. That panel, part of the panel is in good shape. But if you look here, look how wrinkled that is. You know, this could be straightened if you didn't have it. You're working on one of these. You could just weld some sections on here and just straighten that all out. Um, this part would be kind of difficult to straighten. And the issue you run into is when I weld to this, it would be, you know, trying to get that thing back straight again would be difficult. So you get this little area in here straight again. It could be done, but since we have that section, I have to figure out where to cut. Now, this was kind of wrinkly down here. You know, again, that could be straightened and repaired. Um, and you got to figure out what's easier. Let's back you guys up a little bit here. You got to figure out a little bit what's easier to deal with. And a lot of times people just think, oh, yeah, just cut it out and weld the new one in is the easiest solution. It's actually sometimes way more difficult to do. And especially in this panel here, you kind of look at it and you kind of go, well, should I just cut a straight line? straight through here that's so hard to get it to line up so we're not going to go there so it's all uh, what i'm doing is a process of elimination it's not i don't even know how i'm going to do this yet i look at it and i go it just there's too much here to figure out so the only thing i can do is do a process of elimination this part's bad this part on this panel is good so I would like to go ahead and take off the part that I can take off of this and then lay that one in place and then figure out how I'm going to graft it in. That's basically the process of this. There's no way you can know in advance where to cut it when it has so many different places. You've got this thing here in the way. You know, I don't want to move. I don't want to cut through that panel. Like I said, it'd be easier just to remove that portion and then leave this part here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to eliminate this section here. Go ahead and cut that away. Uh, but first we'll just check where. So I need another do not cut line. It's not the line I'm going to cut on. But if you look here, it's kind of hard to hold this and do this. If you look here, there's the seam here. Okay, and we've got this seam right here is the same one. So we know I'll go ahead and measure over and kind of get a rough in of where not to cut, you know, don't cut past this line type of thing. And then cut on the inside of that line somewhere and then uh, work on it from there. So the next thing. I looked at here is I'm not sure if this is the same exact same shape because it's a different year fender. This is, sorry about that. This is a 68 Gia and like a 70 something fender. So let's hope that the lines are the same. It, regardless, it, I can always just make this little piece here, make a patch to cover this. I can use this, straighten it back out, put it back on. But there's a kink right here. So I'd like to be past that. So I'm just going to go ahead and just figure about right there on that part. And then I'm going to cut down. And then I'm going to cut on the inside. What I do on the inside is I'm going to stay away from all this support area here. I'm just going to cut a line right along here. And then clean that up and I'm going to have a double edge, double piece of metal there and you won't really notice it because uh, so I'm going to cut along this line here and use that panel as a reference to 
go into. So I'm going to cut through here. Uh, if you can even see that. Yeah, I'm going to cut right along that line. But I'm going to cut through the other side first so I can see. Once I cut through the other side, I can see where I'm at. Then I'll come back up into it right there. So that's how I'm doing it. That's how I'm sticking to it. Let's see how it goes. Like I said, I really don't know what I'm going to do. Really. There's just too many things. Technically, you know, you should separate all this stuff and try and do it. But it's just too hard to do by the time I separate all that and try and you know take the inner panel away from the outer panel and put the inner panel on and then try and do it that way. I'm just going to end up with a bunch of beat up metal so it'd be it's better if I just go ahead and even if I try to drill it and do it that way oh, it would take forever it'd just take way too long the best way to do this really is if I had original um, a new replacement panel and put on the inner panel first then the outer panel and just it would all go on and the heater tube and all that but you know that's not what we got right we got used parts and I don't even know if they make those new so Probably the only way to fix this is what we're doing. So we'll see how it works. It'll work, but we just don't know how yet. The other thing I need to do is I got to cut like around here. Um, take out that turn signal, put some flat metal in there for the bullet. So I'll just do that as a lap. I'll just put it on the inside lap it. And again, we're not really worried about filler. I can tell this thing already has filler in it. So. Like I said, we're not trying to get a perfect restoration out of this car. We're just trying to get it to where it's a runner and a driver and back on the road again. It'll be kind of cool. 68 Kia. You know. And then from there, he may paint it, make it look nice. But every Kia has got filler in it. I think it doesn't. They all do. Yeah, look how bad that piece was. Look at that. Just all. So I was talking about the kink there. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do now is I, like I said, I'm, I have no idea what I'm going to do until I just start cutting away stuff that I know I can't, I, I have new and I can replace. So the, the first thing I'm going to do, as I know, is when I'm trying to put this piece on here, I don't really want to remove this beam. Some of you guys go, oh, well, you're lazy, whatever. It's not my car. He, you know, it's just trying to help him out with this. So uh, I'm not going to get too involved in trying and making it look perfect and everything. I just want it to be on there, and it'll look good. It'll look really, in fact, it'll look perfect. It's just not going to be perfect. So, and this might be good for some of you guys. Some of you guys might say, no, I'm going to try to butt weld it all in. Honestly, I think you're gonna have a lot more problems trying to do that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna look at okay where this bracket is right here, where this is right here. Okay, if I cut along here and I go up this way, it'll eliminate that lip, so I don't have to try and tuck that underneath, and it'd be a lot easier to weld on the flat surface here. So that's probably what I'm gonna do. And I'm not going to put a lot of welds here. I'm going to put them up here where they were originally. And so, yeah, that'll be, I'll clean this up, get a little, it'll be like an extra layer of stack metal, put a little bit of seam sealer over it when I'm done, and it'll look pretty much like the original seam. Uh, nobody's going to know. And then up in here, I'm going to overlap it, okay, on here, because I've got flat metal here, right? Because I've cleaned up this side. That's why I cleaned up this whole side. I'm going to go ahead and grind these off. Clean this whole side up. So this one's going to overlay whatever. I'll get it down to where it's like an inch. So I can put screws in it. And get it straight. That's the whole idea there. So trying to butt weld it would be much harder to do. And it's not going to be as strong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this back. I don't care 
really I can have this be further back and I'll save this piece right here as a patch section to lay over uh, where I've seamed it. So then I'll just weld a little bit along here, tack weld it, and then seam seal that and it'll look fine for a fender well. And then we'll do that for that. Now I don't know exactly what I'm going to do up here yet. I'll have to bring you guys back into it when I know. Uh, like I said, I'm looking at it. I'm just doing stuff as I'm going, eliminating one thing at a time. And that's kind of how I normally do something like this is just put it in place, eliminate some of the stuff. I, it's just too big of a equation when you look at it all together. But if you look at it in pieces, if you go, okay, I know I can do this and you do one section and then you go, okay, if I know I can do this and you do another section and then you get to the point where you figure it all out. It's not something you're just going to know right off the bat by just looking at it because it's just there's too many layers of metal. So anyway, let's cut this away and let's cut this kind of like that. I think well, I could follow that line right there. It could be somewhere near that line. I could be inside of it, I think. So if I cut like right here and along here and then came to the inside of that line, I could even go up to these welds or that burn through right here. And that looks pretty straight here. So if I just laid it over the top of that and then weld it in, it's not going to rust behind there either. This car's going to have a different life. You know, people go, oh, if it gets to Salt Road, yeah, well, if, you, if you're going to drive it in the winter, then you better be a lot more conscientious of what you're doing. And I wouldn't do that anyway because these old cars just don't last in the winter. But if you drive it, you know, in the good weather, it's going to last for years and years and years, probably as, as long as you live, plus then, you know, probably for the next life of the next person, at least. So, anyway, let's get back and busy.
All right, let's take a look here where we're at. So I've got this, and where I use this little hole to get that to line up. That's the edge of the hole right there. Let me get you guys up a little closer so you can see. The edge of the hole is right here at this flat spot. I hit it a little bit. I actually cut a little bit too far. So there's a little bit of a gap, but it's just right right there. You can see once that's welded, it'll be just right. So, and then it's lapped over right here. So I may have to cut and butt this all the way along. It's going to be a fun one. These are no cakewalk. This is not like your beginner <laughs> just started welding do a gear fender. You know, this is not a not an easy one to do, especially when it's, you know, it's an old used fender. So I got this thing here to line to be pretty good. Um, if you notice, this is too low, okay? And once, you know, I fill in, pull that gap up, all I have to do is just pull that up and then screw it. I did overcut a little bit right here. Let's get you guys so you can see. I'm looking, not looking at the camera. I was looking at the, what I'm doing. Um, so right here you can see it's wide. So I'll just put a filler piece in here. That's not a real big deal. That's not a deal killer. It's just, like I said, on something like this, you're never going to get it right. And then I'll just put that other piece that I cut out. Purposely cut it too far. Um, I just put that over that. And then just weld along this edge here. Just put a few tacks along here, a few tacks along there. It's not a structural piece really. It's the uh, it's for the fresh air. So, and then I'll just put a little bit of caulking along the top to fill that in. Maybe a little bit of foil tape to back it up, just so it doesn't leak air. And then cover that with um, cover that with uh, with seam sealer. You know, on the top and bottom. On the bottom, I can probably I could probably put a filler piece in, but it's just too hard to weld up in the corner up in here. So it won't matter, you know, once it's, as long as it's sealed for the air to go through it, that's all that really matters. You know, a few tack welds on here, you know, a bunch of tack welds on, like, on here, and then hold this piece in, and that will help the structure of it, and then that little bit where it's just, I can't weld it in there, well, it'll be just fine like that. That'll solve that problem. In fact, you'd never even know it was like that, no matter how you did it. So, it's only so much you can do. So, we got here this line. You notice this is lapped over right here, and then it comes down, and I use this hole to line this up. And you notice that it's off a bit. So, got to think about what's going to happen. Is if I cut and butt along here. It's going to drop this down quite a bit. So I almost have to cut and butt just a little bit of it and then start hitting it with a hammer in a, you know, in a, some blunt instrument right here. I'll probably just use like a, one of those, uh, like a, a pry bar or something like that, or a chisel, and just knock it down as I go to make sure that this starts to line up as I'm welding it. So, like I said, there's, you're not going to get this thing to line up perfect and then just weld it in. It's not going to happen. Not on this panel. No way. And you know what? Even if it's a, if it's a, if it's, let's say I come down here and it's an eighth off. Okay. You're never going to see it. The only thing you can see is if this one's higher than that one. And it is right now a little bit, but it'd be really hard to notice. So once you cut this out and bring it down, this is going to come down uh, almost a, a, about a sixteenth to an eighth once that gets cut and butt so I'll probably cut and butt that you know I was gonna try and lap it but there's no way to do that really it's just not gonna line up so I'll just cut through two layers clean it up and lap it cut through two layers lean it clean it up and lap it all the way down that's what I'm thinking right now I don't know maybe it'll change it a little bit here just you know you just gotta work with what you got it's a tough panel to put on Let's look at the other side. Inside here. That looked good. 
So once that's done and welded in place, of course I won't weld that in until after, I'll be focusing on the front. If I focus right here and I get this to line up, this front part to line up, then what I'll do is once I get that welded in, then I'll check my hood, drop my hood down, make sure I have the proper, um, it fits right. And then what I'll do is I'll use that in there to push out or in or whatever, that little bit of gap there. It's kind of the reason why I wasn't really worried about it. And I'll put a patch piece in there. So that's kind of how it's going to work. But yeah, uh, I'll just, and then this is going to get again pushed up once that's. So once if you kind of see the idea, so when I start welding that in, it's going to start dropping down. It's going to start dropping down because this is going to be less resistance. So I have to drop it down as I go. It'll bring that part up. Okay. And then it's just going to work that way. I don't see any other way to do it. I'm, I don't think I can cut it and then have it line up and then butt it or put screws in it. So I'm thinking if I put screws in it to hold it in place while I'm trying to do it. Yeah, it's not, I need it to move, I need it to go down. And without getting, if I start just lining it up as I go, I think it'll, I think it'll just fall right into place. It'll be close enough. Like I said, if this is just a 16th higher than that one, honestly, nobody will ever be able to see it. Not a person on this earth. The whole car's leaning right now a little bit, so. Anyway, everything's around. It's a tough panel. I think I got it. I think so. It's going to look great. It's all done. It's going to fit. And it's kind of cool. It's actually better that it was in two pieces because if it was in one, it'd be really hard to line this end here up if you're looking here. It'd be really hard to get that to all line up, right? So what I'll do is I'll just fake that one into this one. And just put it all together and it's going to be a nice car when it's all done. You won't ever, never know. But, you know, it is what it is. It's just an old junker. I'm going to make it fix it again. There's, this thing here, nobody was going to fix this. No, well, not many people could do that. That's hard. There's a few guys that could. But when you're talking about used panels, it's different than when you see the others. So... See what I'm going to do next. I'll bring you guys back in in a minute. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go for it. I cut a little bit right here. And then I can just kind of tighten it up. Like that. And then bring it in just where I want it. And then... Yeah, this shouldn't be any problem. Because, like I said, there's no lines that need to line up. Like that. You know, the top of this fender line, that's going to be faked in over there. Um, the only thing that needs to line up is this stuff. And that's, I've got it a little closer. I reclamped it like this. So, yeah. I'm not going to weld this part until after I butt that in and put them together in the right place so it will line up right. I think I'll just do a few tacks and we'll take a look at it a little bit later. See how we're going. All right, so I just tacked in a few spots. I just kind of got that so I can get the vice grip off of there. I'm just kind of working my way along. I'm going to go ahead and cut all the way down now and try and push it down where it's supposed to be and make sure it lines up and then continue welding. You know, the worst thing that can happen is you cut it back off and redo it. Big deal. That's just what happens on something like this. I, I don't think it's going to be a problem at all. I can work with it. It doesn't need to be perfect. Just got to have it work and have it look good. And when I'm done, when it's filled, you can't see it. Uh, it's not like this fender is like a super cherry one either. It's got a lot of filler in it already. So we're just trying to make this car run again. Again, like I said. And we are uh, hoping it will look good too. And see what happens.
All right, well, it's not quite going down where it needs to. So we're just gonna cut off a few of the spot welds. And be... I'm gonna kind of drop it into place here. And do that, and then now I can tweak it and drop it. Get a little bit wider gap. Probably widen this one up just a little bit. Just work that fender into place. Going by this hole down here, it's almost an eighth out. So I just need to bring the fender this way. To go do it. It won't do it with a metal lap like that, so because there's just too many compound angles, so that's the trick. Well, you know the challenge. Bring it back in in a second. All right, so here's the issue now. I've got this to be lined up. I actually can line it up, so this is sort of how it works out um, so this is lined up here but now I end up with that massive gap so I've got a I'm thinking I was just gonna relief cut these take these off again some of them I'll leave that one maybe and maybe I can just start working it in all I gotta do is get a couple of more butts on here little tacks and then um, yeah, line up make sure they're lined up and then I can take the vice grips off and I'll uh, actually I'll recut this a little bit more down further because I have to cut it again uh, to get the butt just right and then I'll come back up here and I'll, I'll just what I'm gonna do is just line it up wherever it lines up I'm gonna I'm gonna weld it so you know line it up weld it line it up weld it line it up weld it and just work my way around just keep working around until it until it fits all right well playing around with it it just that yeah, could be the molds are a little bit different too. Different year car. Who knows? It's not that far off. Um, I'm just gonna start buttoning it in and just go for it. Just leave it like that. There's just a. It's about an eighth off at the hole, which again still might correct most of that. Maybe it'll be a sixteenth off. You aren't gonna be able to see that anywhere. But I just I like to show you guys this stuff because reality is you may end up with the same situation and and you know if you're trying to do one of these fenders and you know that's kind of the way it is so I was able to put a screw over here I was able to put a screw in here to tighten this up so that's not fighting me there so I put a screw in there because I kind of got that in the right place again I know this corner is in the right place so that's where I got to start and then work my way around and like I said if there's nothing to line up there's nothing here so the only thing it has to be is the bumper hole the, and the bumper bracket and if that's a 16th off or something you'll never go see it so anyway that's probably normal factory issues as well you know there's nothing perfect the factory they do it with new metal and that's what I was saying in the beginning it'd be better to have the original panel inside and then the heat the uh, fresh air tube and all that you put it put it all on one at a time but you try to do it all at once and it's been welded in something else and all that other stuff you're only gonna get it so close so we'll just leave with the dare we just I was wanted to see if I could get it a little bit better but it seems like it's just not gonna get that much better it's a little tiny bit better right now I got about a 16th tighter so maybe by the time I get to there it'll be straight who knows
right let's take a look here I think that's about it for part one here got a pretty massive V gap here it's stressed going that way I gotta push it in I was pushing it in as hard as I could with a hammer and I just got to do a little bit more of that and I'm too tired to do it so I just got to beat that sucker in or get the porter power out and pull that section in uh, this is a little bit narrow here I don't know these a little wide over here a little wider so I could probably do a little bit of movement on the hood worst scenario if you ever have one that's really bad you could just grind the hood down grind it down take off like whatever you need to and then just weld up the edge and then just grind it grind off the welds get it nice again and you can make it whatever shape you need anyway yeah these old gears just they didn't <laughs> They were really hard to fix, you know, you couldn't fix these things. You know, no, a lot of guys just, they didn't, they couldn't, they should have seen the stuff I've seen. Way worse than this. This isn't bad, but I've seen stuff that's like, wow, you know. Just thick Bondo, you know, that thick, trying to fix something, because it's just, it's just really hard to put one of these together if you don't have the original parts, and you don't have the uh, NOS quarter panel, you know, or, or fender and the NOS inner panels you know they just don't fit nothing fits and if you use aftermarket or you know original stuff it's gonna come all in compounded pieces and you, it, it's all you get just gotta make it work so anyway we will talk later on the next video and yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the work done on this one and we'll see what see what happens on the next part it's gonna be I don't know, maybe I'll finish it in the next video. That'd be good. That would be cool. Got to get this thing done real quick and get it out of here. At least that portion. We're going to do some other stuff too, remember? The metal work in the back. We'll be doing the the deck lid area, the battery tray, and the little hole in the floor. No, that's all easy stuff. This is to, this is this is hard stuff right here. This is this is harder probably than even the bucket truck. The, you know, as far as getting everything to line up and all that. These are really hard to do. All right, talk to you in the next one. Please like, share, and subscribe.